So what's with the birthday get up? A past student of mine, Jody Clocko, had a birthday on Monday. So happy belated birthday, Jody. Now we all know that with getting older, we get slower, we get fatter, we just can't remember as much. The key to getting over that is to keep your mind and body stimulated. Lucky for you, Jody, your wife Kim agrees that you need to get out and do something. So she signed you up for the basic survival class next week at the school. Can't wait to see you. Happy birthday, buddy. Why don't you try riding an electric skateboard through the woods? Thank you. Here's the I need a one wheel skateboard. What else do you guys need? Electric skateboards, mini bikes. I mean, I cover every basis. So this is what I've been riding around. It's a one wheel, it's an electric skateboard. How this actually works is when you lean one direction, the motor kicks in, boom, it goes off. It goes flying forward. Lean this direction, it goes back. I don't surf, I don't snowboard, I've never skateboarded. This is a huge learning curve for me, but since you guys wanted it so bad, I was more than obliged to go out and buy this thing. I absolutely do love it. You will be seeing a lot more of this. It has nothing to do with bushcraft, but it's just adding another hobby to my list of things that I already probably don't need to be doing. I'm either gonna break my neck, break my back, break my arms, something crazy is gonna happen with it, but it's enjoyable in the time being. It got a little bit cooler from when I started this vlog until right now, so um, had to put on the hoodie, had to put on the hoodie. I'm not complaining at all though. I would rather this cooler temperature, nice breeze blowing through, and with the leaves covering all the trees right now, perfect filming weather, perfect. It was a little bit sunnier this morning, perfect right now. Okay, housekeeping. The t-shirt thing is happening. The t-shirt thing's definitely happening. So that is, it's in the works. I worked on it majority of the morning today. I can't say exactly when it will happen, but it's gonna happen. Also, my wife who pretends that she's the CEO is on board with it. So if you're married and your wife's into something, I mean, you know what's gonna happen. Lastly, if you win a t-shirt, you need to message me through YouTube Messenger because that's where I check for that. If you message me in other social media outlets, good probability it's gonna get lost in the mix. I get, especially Facebook, I get so much influx on there of just, just craziness that it, it just gets lost in the mix. So you have to message me through YouTube. It also allows us to make sure that who we're saying wins is actually the one writing to us. So I could see your screen name kind of thing. On to the questions. Are you allowed to use a glass or even a canteen cup when bush drinking or you have to drink out of the can? to be a real bushcrafter, LOL. <laughs> um, you could do whatever you want. I drink out of the can, the bottle. I mean, it depends. Sometimes I'll just, I'll get out my Kukska and drink out of that. Sometimes I will drink right out of the bottle or the can. I mean, it all depends what's happening, where I'm at and what I feel like doing. So I think as long as you're bush drinking, I'm okay with it. Have you ever considered hiking the AT? Also, would you use primitive equipment? I've never really thought about hiking the AT. I'm not huge into hiking. That's just not one thing that I'm really, really passionate or into. And I think you have to have some driving passion to want to do the entire AT. With that said though, I have done sections of the AT that are near me because it's not too far from me. And when I was training to do my ultra marathon type races and my obstacle course racing, I would do long sections of the AT to um, prepare for that because it is pretty rough and rugged in some parts of Pennsylvania. So from the New York border, uh, all the way down until 183 in Pennsylvania, if you guys know where that section is, all completed by me. Most of it was like high paced hiking, trail running when I could kind of thing. It would be a cool experiment. I just also don't have the time to hike the whole AT. Uh, but I, again, I think you just have to have the passion and the, the will to really want to do that. I just don't have that in me right now. It's just not something I want to do. Are you really near a creek or is that fake? Piped in the background to substitute the promised music that didn't last too long. <laughs> so the music itself while I was editing was just driving me nuts. So I thought, well, if it's already driving me nuts, it's my movie, I can get rid of it if I want to. But 
Uh, that is, that's the inlet that feeds into my pond and my school property. That's how fast the water is running. Pond has been overflowed for about two weeks. It, it's craziness. It finally subsided a little bit. Stuff starting to dry out around here. Can you please show us a yearbook photo of you? I feel like you look like Herb Cobain when you were younger. <laughs> Definitely more preppy than grunge. The grunge scene was about six or seven years before I was in high school, so I just missed that scene. Um, but this is what I look like. <laughs> Good looking. <laughs> it's always funny to look back. I even look at pictures when I was a little kid. I still look the same. I mean, just like you get older looking, or in my case, my hair gets less, and um, you know, just, I don't know. It's always funny to look back at your old pictures. On Axe question, not sure what question that is, but we'll go with it. Your intro into your videos has a double bit cruiser axe. Why didn't you mention that? So, I honestly, I'm not sure what question we're referring to. Probably talking about, oh, I do know what question now that I'm thinking about it. So it was using a hatchet or an ax. I personally have a few double bit axes. I don't use them at all. Like I, I can't even tell you the last time I picked up a double bit ax to really use. I have one at our school property here that I use with the students to just talk about demonstration and show them double bit axes, how they should be sharp and stuff like that. But um, the reason I don't is, number one, if you take care of the edge of your ax, in our situation as bushcrafters, we should have the time and availability to sit down and resharpen our ax. Second thing is the danger of a double bit ax in general around camp with multiple people. Why are you going through the hassle of having that second bit? And I get the whole, these, you guys don't need to leave comments of why we use double bit, I understand it. I just personally, I don't, I don't use them. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I just don't use them. I think a single bit ax for me works perfect. Do you really eat scrapple? I do eat scrapple. I don't eat scrapple all the time. I think it's like a hot dog almost though. People right away when they think of a hot dog, they think about the eyeballs, the wieners, and the guts of every farm animal in the world thrown into a vat and made into that. So the guys that I know that make scrapple, they make it with good like pork shoulder and pork butt. So it's it's good stuff. They're not putting a bunch of crap in it. So it's really good and I do eat it. You like that I said wieners? Sweet tea or unsweet, and that's the question. Actually, I'm right down the middle. If I am somewhere, if I can get half sweet, half unsweet and mixed, that's what I like. Are you inspired by the old woodsmen, George Washington Sears, Horace Kephart, Jim Bridger? Tremendously. I would say that they are probably guys that I look up to. I get a lot of inspiration off of them. I look back at old photos, old pictures. I read books that those guys wrote, and that's what drives me. I love it. I love their gear. I love that time frame. I love it. So that is, that's a huge driving factor for me. Do you know of any good desert bushcraft channels? Nope. Hey Dan, do you all have to worry about heat rash out there in PA? How do you deal with it? So heat rash in the middle of the summer, yeah. Yeah, we do. It gets crazy out here. Humidity, wet, hot. That's how we deal with it, monkey butt. This is what I found that works absolutely best, anti-friction powder with calamine. Uh, I don't know. I just sprinkle this in and I'm good to go. Hey Dan, you do, before I go any further with this question, a lot of questions about muzzle loading and flintlock shooting. This is what I can say because this is part of this question. I do have a flintlock rifle. It's a 45 caliber. I shoot it once in a while. I am not by any means, any means, a good flintlock rifle shooter. I know just enough to shoot the gun. I have a fun time shooting it. I don't shoot it all that often. I got mine at Dixon's muzzle loader, which is in Kempton, PA. I got it real cheap. It was used, an old man died, they got the gun. I got it and that's my gun. So I think it's cool. I just, I have other things that I like doing a little bit more. So I sort of put that on the back burner. But um, for everybody to ask questions about that, I can't even really give you an answer of where to get something, where, what kind to get. I, I just don't have enough experience with it. I have uh, my gun, I shoot it once in a while and that's really all I can say about it. Now, this question does go on to say, did I ever go to any American Mountain Men Eastern type events? I tried to get involved with the American Mountain Men Association. 
the person I talked to about the American Mountain Association just took it over the top. And what I mean by that was he was a nice guy, very, very into it. So into it though, a little discouraging to myself and my buddy Dan, who you see in all the videos, because it was like, you, you can't come out unless you have all this gear and spend all this money and do all this stuff and it has to be proper. And we just didn't have the time or resources to do that. So some time went by, I met another individual at the Fort Frederick Market Fair, and he started talking to me again about the American Mountain Men Association. They do awesome events. I honestly just have not had time to make the plunge and get involved with another group. And I feel real bad, especially even in my area, there's some sportsman clubs I got involved with. I just don't have the time to put into those associations. So I don't wanna be one of those guys that just show up here or show up there and it's, I don't wanna do that. So I just don't have the time to do it. But if you're into that mountain men era stuff, long hunter stuff, check out American Mountain Men Association. I'll give the place a plug for sure. It seems like a great group of people. Can you please talk about where a person can go and practice bushcraft? That's a tough question. I answered this question a while ago. You really have to try to find somebody who has property that is nice enough to allow you to come on and use the property. If they say no, just accept the fact that they're saying no and you can't go on the property. But if you can find somebody with some property that'll allow you on there, that's all the best because you can make your fires, you might be able to cut down a couple saplings with the owner's permission, that kind of thing. It is very difficult in any kind of state or federal lands. Of course, there's a ton of rules, as you mentioned in your question as that went on. So, I mean, you just gotta do what you gotta do. I would go out, hike around, try to identify stuff, and if you can find somewhere to maybe get some sticks and cut some branches and carry that stuff in with you, try that. Otherwise, breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> Don't break the law, but all I'm saying, it, it is tough. I mean, you just gotta try, you, it's, you just, it's like hunting. You gotta find somewhere where people will allow you to do it if you don't wanna go on to um, state property. What is your go-to water filtration while in the woods? Charcoal, life straw, straight boiling? I'm a huge proponent of boiling water. I think that that is the most important. I think boiling water is, that's the ticket. The problem with boiling becomes the summertime. So not right now, today would be fine. I'd have a fire and boil my water. When it is 90 degrees with 100% humidity here in Pennsylvania, Boiling water is like the last thing you wanna do because it's crazy hot, you gotta be near a fire. Even if you get the fire going, you're gonna walk away. You're still dealing with fires, dealing with hot water. So recently, over the last year, year and a half, the Sawyer Mini water filters, I started experimenting with them a little bit. Now it's not bushcrafty. I, I get that, like it's not a bushcrafty kind of thing to do, but it's eliminating you from being by a fire, especially if you're carrying it as a survival type item. Carry that stainless steel water bottle, get a water filter that is reliable, that you've used, have practiced with, and you know it's gonna work, and just take that along. It's just an extra thing. And if it breaks, it breaks, you still have your stainless steel water bottle, but that Sawyer Mini has seemed to be just about the best out there. You just buy them at Walmart, they're cheap, and then when they're no good or they break, throw them away. Not sure if you answered this before, but what was your major in college? I graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Criminology. Then I went into the workforce. I worked for a few years. I went back to school. I got my master's in business administration, so my MBA. And uh, they're the two degrees I have. I also am a certified welder, so I did go and do that all through that, just because I was interested in it. Can you suggest a three to four season lightweight tent for three people? Sorry, I can't. Um, I have not used a tent. I have a big North Face expedition tent that I bought because I always thought they looked badass. I had a lot of REI dividends left the one year. I thought I'm just buying this tent just to have a good tent. So that tent is really good, but that is very expensive. I don't, it's the yellow dome looking tents. It's one of their bigger ones. That's the only tent. No, I actually own another tent. I None of this even matters. I just don't know enough about tents to say what is a good three season tent. Just being around and looking around at stuff. I go to REI every so often. They seem like they have good equipment. So did you ever go there and check out their tents or go online and look at them? And see, I know they have some three season tents when I'm walking through there set up. I never stopped and really looked at them, but it might be a good option. Can you make something out of your beard for us? Maybe a shirt or a hat? <laughs> I don't think my beard's that epic and I just can't grow the fibers that long in my beard to actually braid them and then weave them. If I could, I would. Sorry about that. Do you ever think you'll teach primitive skills? 
I do teach some primitive skills in my more advanced classes. In those classes, we talk about the items we're carrying, what if we didn't have them, how would we recreate them from the landscape, and that's about the extent of primitive skill teaching that I actually do. There's small things worked into other exercises that we do. So, for example, we might use modern tools to cut bark off of a tulip poplar tree, and then again, modern cutting tools to shape that and make our score marks to fold it into a basket. And then we'll go dig up spruce roots and tie it together. So we're using somewhat of primitive skills in making bark baskets with root cordage, but we're using modern tools. So more of a modern primitive mixture is really what I would say I teach. I don't have any specific all primitive classes. And as of right now, I don't see that happening anytime in the near future. And that's gonna be about it for today's question and answer. Just a short one, I had a lot of travel time because I had to go get an electric skateboard and now I really wanna ride it. That's gonna be about it for this week's question and answer. I'm gonna do a little one wheeling, hopefully not break my arms, my legs, my neck, anything like that. Maybe next week we'll be able to do something even funner with the one wheel, which I already have some good stuff planned. So, I mean, as always, leave questions below. They're not gonna get answered until next week. And hopefully next week, we can have lots of fun with this. So until then, stay in the woods, or if you have a one wheel, stay in your one wheel. Do you guys know how sketchy this is? This is brand new to me. So I'm now on the one wheel, camera gear, very expensive camera in my hand, and I don't really know what I'm doing.